Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to continue our DCS at zero to ace and uh, continuing with the intermediate series using our nice little twin jet trainer here, the C101. So uh, last time we spent some time and got everything all nice and plugged in, turned on, uh, ready to rock. We got all of our power systems all set up and everything is pretty much ready to go as far as our flight goes. Uh, today we're basically going to be concentrating on the absolute basics of flying this aircraft. Again, we're not going to do anything too, too sophisticated. Just to give you a general idea of what it's like to fly a jet and some of the kind of problems and challenges uh, you're going to be running into as we go. Before I do that, of course, I'm going to go ahead and double check to make sure my last couple items are done. I'm going to make sure my radios have been turned on. Looks good. We're going to switch that to the power settings. Uh-oh. Loud tone. Ah, because it was the test setting. Haha, <laughs> I've done that a million times. Volume looks good. Now swing over to this side. I'm going to go double check to make sure the radio frequency is set here. Opening up between my legs, I'm going to go ahead and set my IFS system to the norm option. We don't want to be all letting anybody not know that we're not not there. I think that makes sense. And then we're ready to roll. So jet engines are very different than propeller engines. Uh, when you first give them thrust, it takes them a while to actually get you moving. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and disengage the parking brake, which you can see I've done already. I'm going to go ahead and hold down the brakes. I'm going to give it a, about a half throttle. I'm just going to let go. And the aircraft starts rolling forward. And then I go ahead and pull the throttle back to zero. Now, this aircraft, unlike some other jet aircraft, will slow down to pretty much nothing. So you're going to have to give it just a little bit more power to keep this thing rolling nice and smoothly on the ground. Give it just a little bit more. There it goes. And again, the aircraft, because of its jet engine, it takes a very long time to respond, which is going to make things very interesting for us later on. So we'll go ahead and start rolling our way towards the runway there. All lit up. You can see the runway is conveniently literally right there, which makes it super easy for us. Go ahead and back that throttle. Remember, it's going to take a while for the engine to slow down on us. Kind of take a look around. Again, a nice, beautiful winter day up here in uh, southern Russia. Come rolling up to the roll here. Making sure I'm not cutting anybody off or anything like that. Again, something that matters more in multiplayer. So, in this aircraft, uh, you're going to go ahead and use your feet to steer on the ground. So, I'm going to go ahead and kick it to the right. I'm going to go ahead and hit the brake, and that will get me going. Now, on this particular aircraft, you have to use your nose wheel steering in order for the process of actually getting this thing to steer. Now, if you sit here and just start cranking on it, you'll notice that I can't actually steer this aircraft to the right. The reason is because the nose wheel on this thing does not steer. Now, that's an interesting problem that a lot of people have not seen before in all the other aircraft that they've flown so far. Now, the reason that we have that issue is because of the way this particular aircraft is set up. You know, right now we have it in such a way that we can't actually go ahead and do that. So we actually have to use differential braking for this purpose. Now, luckily for us, if we go to controls and we type in brake, you'll notice that we have a couple access commands for this, um, making it so that we can actually brake one at a time. So if we wanted to, for example, to brake the X, well, one on the right, we can hold a left, alt, and then X to go ahead and do that. So if we go ahead and pop out this real quickly, get ourselves rolling a little bit. I can actually hit that brake for the purposes of causing the aircraft to start steering in that direction. Now, unfortunately, this is one heck of an awkward process, which is another one of the reasons where you want to be very mindful of the different controls that you have. Now, if we wanted to go ahead and brake in the opposite direction, you can see that I can press Control X as opposed to Left Alt X. Hmm, this is only uh, impossibly awkward. <laughs> so basically, hold down X and then tap Control or Alt in order to steer this thing on the ground. <laughs> That is a definitely a new experience, and you'll get the hang of it, I'm sure. All right, before we enter the runway, we're going to go ahead and ask for permission to do so. Go ahead and pull up a communication menu, request takeoff. While we're doing that, we'll get ready for takeoff. I'm going to go ahead and throw down my flaps. We've got a handy-dandy switch over here. We're just going to slap it down to the takeoff position, and it's going to go ahead and now mount those things down to the position that we need them to be in. Looking out the back, we're just going to give everybody a shake, make sure everything's working the way we expect it to. It looks pretty good to me. And we'll go ahead and make our way onto the runway. Give this just a little bit of thrust. Send out the landing lights. These little tiny bars that come out of the side. And now we are ready for our first jet takeoff. Lucky for us, we don't have a full run-up process or anything along those lines that we have to zip through in order to get this thing ready to go. So it keeps it pretty easy for us. All right, looks pretty good. Our runway 27 is our lucky runway here. Hold down Control and X to go ahead and give ourselves that left break. Oh boy, that'll make you slightly insane, but it's not uncommon in aircraft of this size. The F-16 has its own little issues, as you'll discover as far as the steering on the ground goes. All right, get ourselves as lined up with that as we possibly can. And we're going to go ahead and hold the brake and come to a complete stop here. Okay, perfect. Okay, nice and lined up. Everything is looking pretty good now. The aircraft is nice and smooth. Take one last check to make sure everything is looking pretty good. 
Yeah, it looks about right for me. I'm just checking to make sure everything's fine. Looks good, looks good, looks good, looks good. All right, let's do it to it. So for takeoff on this one, we're going to hold the brakes all the way down. We're going to give it full throttle, and then we're going to go ahead and now get this thing ripping along basically as fast as we can. We're going to check to confirm that we're in the correct takeoff position, which we are. We're going to go double check to make sure everything is nice and smooth as far as controls goes. We don't want any surprises in that regard. Trust me on that one. It happens. We're also going to confirm that our takeoff trim is set correctly. In this case, you can see this little line here. It just says that your takeoff trim is right. By adjusting the trim, you can see that that needle comes back and forth. So what we're going to do is we're going to give it full throttle, wait for the engine to come into full power. We're going to go ahead, and since we have no extra weight today, we're just going to use that. Otherwise, we can use the MPR system, which we simply have a button on our joystick for. All right, go ahead and smoothly apply full throttle. Remember, it's going to take a moment for this thing to actually get rolling. Oh, yeah, that's definitely a moment. Ah, get ready to have to press your brakes in a hurry, by the way. All right, 90.1, engine's warming up. And off we go. Okay, let's do it. As you start to pick up a little bit of speed, your rudders are going to be very easy to use. You won't have to be dealing with that pesky nose wheel steering here. Full power, off we go. Yep, so it's, it's going to take a minute to get this thing in the air. <laughs> in case you were curious. So, uh, how's the kids? Good? All right. Excellent. Excellent. Yes, this is uh, full power. All right. We're going to give it a gentle tug. We're about 120. We're just going to lift the front wheel off the ground. Sorry, I'm going to start getting a little loose on us. And all of a sudden, the aircraft just comes up into the air. We're going to hold this position for just a moment at about 140 knots. We're going to make sure there's no runway underneath us. As soon as that case is true, we're going to go ahead and bring in the landing gear. Got to take just a minute to come in. Once we get about 145 knots, we're going to go ahead and bring up the flaps and put it into the normal position. Nice. Flaps are up. We're going to go ahead and give ourselves a little bit of forward trim here and kind of knock out some of that. Whoa, it's this aircraft. Now, this aircraft, unlike its uh, predecessor, or its uh, cousin, I should say, well, not really. It's called a close twin, the EB version, will actually overheat if you use full throttle. This particular aircraft, we don't have to worry about that, though. All right, so the first thing you're going to notice with a jet aircraft is uh, you have controls that feel a little slow. Uh, the reason for that is many jet aircraft use what they call hydraulics, and it basically provides you an extra little bit of boost of energy, so it makes it a lot easier to move the controls. Otherwise, you couldn't physically move them yourselves. So even though uh, we're climbing out here, you're noticing I'm needing an awful lot of a holding up that nose there in order to keep this thing steady. And again, you're going to see this on a lot of jets. We're just going to bring ourselves around to a nice little left traffic pattern and kind of rip through the town here. We're doing 200 knots already. It seems a lot faster than the Yak. Alrighty then. But pull yourself throttle back about halfway there, push that nose down. Now this aircraft, because of its seating position, makes it a little tricky as far as seeing where you're going. We've got a little warning light there, and we have a gear warning. The reason the gear warning is on is because I pulled the throttle back less than halfway. It noticed that we're at low altitude, and it goes ahead and gives you a little heads up about that. So the first thing you're going to have that's going to be brand new in this aircraft is how insanely sensitive the trim is. You're going to give it some trim, and all of a sudden the whole nose is going to lift up and start getting weird on you. That's just the nature of the beast with jets. All right, we're going to finish our traffic pattern here. We're going to slowly pull back on the power. What we're going to do is uh, once we go ahead and get a beam the numbers, which we just did, we're going to go ahead and get underneath our landing gear at retraction speed. And we're going to, as you notice, when I kill the throttle, the aircraft does not slow down. My throttle is back as far back as it can go, and it won't slow down because this is a jet aircraft. Now, because it's a jet aircraft, it takes a lot more planning when it comes to getting this thing to slow down. You'll see that worse in the F-16. But I know my nose down. I need to get less than 175. Delightful. Landing gear comes down. Push my flaps into the takeoff position, and now I'm ready to actually go ahead and start slowing down. We could use the speed brakes, but I'm going to hold off on that for now. Go ahead and take myself a nice gentle left turn here. Remember, as this aircraft gets slow, it will start buffeting on you if things get a little unfriendly. So be very cautious with it. A little bit of right foot there, kind of getting ourselves lined up again. You can see we don't have any sort of weird trim or yaw or anything along those lines. Looking out our window here. Get ourselves nice and beam. And that's looking pretty beamed right there. A little bit of right foot. And now you're going to learn about something new called the index error, which is this guy right here. When we land the airplane, we want to see a single green circle. That means we're at the correct angle of attack. So whatever our current speed is, is perfect for what we're trying to do. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and bring down my next notch of flaps. I'm going to give ourselves a nice and gentle left turn, and the aircraft is going to get very slow. So you can see how that green circle is now a complete green circle. 
That means we're at the correct angle of approach for an angle of attack rather for landing, not necessarily angle of approach. If you get that, that simply means you need to pull up some more or slow down. If you get it the other way, it means you got a much, much bigger problem. So if I pull back really hard, you'll notice it comes back to green. So I'll go ahead and reduce thrust. Now the trick to landing jets is basically getting it so that you get that perfect green and you're coming down at about a three degree, pretty much level. So in this case, I got to slow down a lot. Pull my throttle back, bring the nose up. As we start to slow down though, get very, very quick on the throttle because you don't want to be slowing down too much. So we're still a very, very, very fast here. And I can tell we're very, very fast. Go ahead and pop out the speed brakes for just a half a second. There we go, nice. So now that you see how we have the one green circle, that means we have the correct angle of attack for our approach, which means whatever our th current throttle setting is, is probably perfect. So I can see that the runway is pretty much in the same position. I'm gonna apply a little bit more thrust. Remember, it takes time for the thrust to kick in. Looks good, I got a single green circle, a little bit more thrust. There's the big two seven. I'm gonna go pull the nose up. And we're simply going to play keep away with the ground until it gently comes down. Again, this can take quite a bit if you come in a little fast. Speed brakes out. And we are down. And hold gentle on the brakes because we do not have anti-skid on this particular aircraft. To help you slow down a little bit, don't forget you can always pop out the speed brakes and that'll help get you going down to a little bit slower speed. So that's it as far as a basic introduction to this aircraft goes. Uh, the big thing is that index area is your best friend as far as uh, doing approaches. Don't approach as steeply as I did, otherwise it's going to be kind of tricky. The tow brakes makes things a little bit more fun. Uh, next time we'll take a look at the basics of navigating this particular aircraft. Enjoy.